Welcome to Together in Worship for this week and welcome to the Salvation Army Hall in Gisborough. And here we are in March and the year is moving so quickly already. And here we are on the third Sunday in Lent and it's our self-denial Sunday. So today we share the well-known Bible story about blind Bartimaeus and we share in giving our gifts for the work of the International Salvation Army. We've got some good songs as well, including a song recorded at a divisional congress in Limpopo. Here's a joyful song to start with, one that reminds us the gospel is for the whole world. Whosoever heareth, shout, shout the sound, send the blessed tidings all the world around. Spread the joyful news wherever man is found, whosoever will may come. That song was written because a converted thief became an evangelist and preached for a whole week every night on this one text, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life. The worship leader for that week was so impressed with all these sermons on that one text, with the emphasis on whosoever, that he went home and wrote, Whosoever heareth, shout, shout the sound. It's a message for the whole world, and it fits our theme today. Psalm 67 reminds us, May God be gracious to us and bless us, and make his face shine on us, so that your ways may be known on earth, your salvation among all nations. May the peoples praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you. May the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you rule the peoples with equity and guide the nations of the earth. May the peoples praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you.
One of the great things about the Salvation Army is its internationalism. What used to be a European Western movement that was working overseas, as it were, is now fully established in different countries and different cultures, confident in itself, expressing what it means to be a Salvationist in their own ways. And it has to be said that it's in some of these countries where the Gospel message is spreading and the army is growing like nowhere else. Of course, many are developing countries, and that's why we are keen to support them. It used to be that we would send missionaries to do the work, but they have their skilled, trained officers and soldiers of their own. They preach and teach the children, they nurse the sick, they feed the hungry, and it's our gifts that give them some of the tools and the resources to witness and to work for Jesus. God's Spirit really is working in our world today. All over the world, the Spirit is moving. All over the world, as the prophet said it would be. All over the world, there's a mighty revelation of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. The Salvation Army began evangelism, worship and service in Pakistan in 1883 and provides services and facilities across the country, including community health programmes, orphanages, schools, health, literacy and skill development. The Army there says it will be a spiritually accountable, courageous and growing part of the universal Christian church, serving local communities. There are 132 core and 378 outposts and societies. And in a mainly Muslim country, work well in the community and are accepted by the wider population. Of course, the pandemic has had an effect in Pakistan. The army provided food for families because so many people lost their incomes. The officers and soldiers are reported to be remaining in good heart. We pray for Pakistan and for all the work around the world so that the whosoever can hear the word of God and see the gospel in action. And this brings us to the giving of our gifts so that our international army can prosper. We will place here on the Bible in our altar service envelopes that some have sent in already. They are your gifts and they also represent others. However you give this week, May your gift be part of the answer to a prayer prayed in Pakistan or Burkina Faso or the Philippines.
Father, your gospel is the hope of the world. We thank you for every single expression of Salvation Army witness in over 130 countries. For every core, every community project, every hospital, school. We pray for the officers, the soldiers, adherents and junior soldiers, sometimes living in difficult circumstances, but worshipping you under the Salvation Army flag. This week we pray for Pakistan especially, that you would empower and protect them, that the gospel would be heard by the people. Lord, with them, we pray for the countries we have thought about over the weeks and the work that takes place around the world that we never hear of. May your army grow as new converts are made. May our gifts be used to support, encourage and strengthen those who work, wish, worship and witness around our army world. May your spirit continue to move. In Jesus' name. Amen. Mark chapter 10 verses 46 to 52. Jesus and his disciples came to Jericho. They were leaving the city. A large crowd was with them. A blind man was sitting by the side of the road begging. His name was Bartimaeus. Bartimaeus means son was Timaeus. He heard that Jesus of Nazareth was passing by, so he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many people commanded him to stop. They told him to be quiet. But he shouted even louder, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, Call for him. So they called out to the blind man, Cheer up, get upon your feet. Jesus is calling for you. He threw his coat to one side, then he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to be able to see. Go, says Jesus, your faith has healed you. Right away he could see, and he followed Jesus along the road. A line from a song came immediately to mind when I read again that account of Bartimaeus. When I came to Jesus with my sin and shame, and to him confessed my deepest need, when by faith I trusted fully in his name, God's rich grace was granted me indeed. That's our experience, while Bartimaeus also came with his deep need and found healing and a new purpose in life. Many other things I cannot understand. All above me mystery I see. But the gift most wonderful from God's own hand surely is his gift of grace to me.
One of my favourite choruses is this one. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Now, it's not a Salvation Army chorus, but everyone seems to know it. It's an old one, of course, and it's done the rounds. It's been popular, I guess, because it speaks to the heart. It brings out a response. I chose it because of the words, look full in his wonderful face. Now, I don't know about you, but when I read, I like to imagine what's going on. I like to look deeper into the text and picture it. Think of the moment that Bartimaeus stands before Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. Let's just stop there for a moment. Why would Jesus ask that? He can't have not noticed his blindness. What could Jesus imagine Bartimaeus would ask? Jesus knew he was blind, but he asked him anyway, what do you want me to do for you? I believe he's asking the blind man, what do you really desire? What is in your heart? What are you asking? And the blind man answers, Rabbi, I want to see. More than anything else, I want to be able to look at the sky and the trees, the houses, the people that I love. And Jesus, hearing the longing in the man's voice and detecting a faith born out of need and desire that had filled this man's heart for so long, replies, your faith has healed you. And I imagine that the blind man, using his eyes for the first time, light flooding into him as he turns his eyes upon Jesus, he looks full into his wonderful face. He saw the light, and in that light he saw Jesus. You know, there's something about Bartimaeus that impresses me. He was persistent. Nobody and nothing was going to stop him getting to Jesus. He was filled with hope that one day he would see again. And that hope was aroused when he heard that there was a man, the Messiah, the son of David, who was healing all who came to him. And on that day, he heard that Jesus was coming. And having heard what Jesus could do, knowing who he was, he shouted, he yelled. There was no stopping his cries for attention. He was going to be healed. He was not going to let Jesus pass by. And when given the chance, he flung his cloak aside and ran towards the voice of Jesus. 25 years ago, Major Fiona and I were at Loughborough Corps and I blessed the Corps Secretary they had who had recorded something wonderful in the Corps history book. There amongst the reports of sales of work and carol services and Sunday school outings, there was a page that described a revival. Now you don't get too many of those. It was 1923 and cadets, trainee officers had come to Loughborough from London to conduct an Easter campaign. And I think, if I remember rightly, 300 people were converted in those 10 days. They joined the core. Now you just imagine that, that the Holy Spirit moved so powerfully in this core or your core or church that in 10 days you would get 300 new converts. It makes you want to cry out, Lord, do it for us. Revive us again. Well, anyway, it's said that one of the new converts was the landlady of the pub next door to the hall. And the history book tells us that she rushed out of the pub, ran down the aisle of the hall to literally fling herself at the mercy seat at the front. And there she was truly converted. She later moved away from Loughborough and apparently Mrs. General Florence Booth, the wife of Bramwell, bought her a bonnet. Now there's a whole other story there, I feel. This is what determined and passionate faith looks like. The landlady was set on giving her life to Christ and it seems to reflect the blind man's own determination to get to Jesus. He called out to Jesus and came running and then he confessed his need. 
God knows our needs. He wants to meet our needs, especially our need for salvation, redemption, forgiveness. But he asks us to confess our sins to him, to confess our need of grace. Call to me, come to me, confess your need. That's how Jesus answers prayer. And on another subject, God says to the people, call to me and see if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour out such a blessing. Yes, he could bless us just like that, but very often he waits for our call and says, what do you want me to do for you? With Bartimaeus, do we say, Lord, I want to see? Perhaps we say, Lord, I need to be forgiven. I want to be healed. I want to be strong. I want to be blessed. Bartimaeus called. He came. He confessed. And when Jesus answered his prayer, he accompanied Jesus on the road. After Jesus met his need, Bartimaeus followed him. I can't tell you that he understood everything about Jesus. Maybe he misunderstood some things. But like us, he started to follow Jesus on the road. And it wasn't long before this blind man who looked into the face of Jesus would quite possibly have looked at the face of the one on the cross. It's the cross that leads us to see clearly who Jesus is. It's the cross that reveals him in love and power. I'm sure Bartimaeus continued to follow the one who healed him and found an inner grace too. What is our need? What do we call out for? Are we determined enough to confess our need and then with that same determination begin to follow Jesus, continue to follow him, even if that journey takes us to a cross? Jesus does call us. He does meet our need. But then he says to us, follow me. May our response to his call be as eager as our determination to receive his blessing. Let's pray together. We thank you, Lord, for all the benefits you have given us in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, friend and brother, and for the suffering he bore for us on the cross. We pray that, following the example of so many who have followed you, we too may see you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Thank you for sharing with us again today. Wherever you are, may God bless you and your family and your church or call. And we hope that you'll join us next time for Together in Worship.
our benediction together. As we open our eyes to see the world in a new light, as we follow Jesus through life, may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit go with us and guide us always. Amen.